continuing our series uh, through the book of Peter, and it isn't, uh, it isn't too often that I get uh, what I would call a word for the year, and I'm still processing what the Lord has been saying to me uh, about the word that he's been giving me, and as I was asking the Lord uh, what story or what text would be appropriate to uh, apply the word that he's given me, I uh, just kept coming back to the story of Moses. And it's a familiar story. How many of you know the story of Moses? I think probably almost every one of you uh, does. And uh, I do want to uh, just highlight a few things from uh, the story of Moses encountering God and, uh, and God's calling to him uh, to, take the people, uh, to take the people of God out of the, the land of Egypt. And uh, the word that, uh, that God gave me really for the year 2017 um, and the phrase that just just kept coming to me, and and again I'm uh, I'm allowing it to kind of germinate and and take root, but I really believe it is a word for this year, uh, for the church, for our church in particular, and perhaps for the body of Christ generally speaking, and generally speaking, it is a word for everybody all the time. But the phrase that just kept coming to me was, "It's a year of growth. It's a year of growth." Now that should be true every year, right? 
Uh, and so, and that's what I thought when I uh, heard it from the Lord and I was talking to Blair about it. And, and, uh, uh, and as I was asking the Lord, you know, what to share with you this morning in regards to a year of growth, he took me to the story of Moses. And Moses, of course, uh, as you know, was called by God to do, uh, you know, some amazing, amazing things. And what God did in calling Moses was took Moses out of his, his comfort zone, if you will, and uh, gave him something that he had in mind for him to do that, uh, that stretched him beyond what was comfortable for himself, but with God uh, was possible because of his presence in his life. And so as we come into 2017, which I believe will be a year of growth, I believe uh, that what the Lord is going to begin to do in each of us is is reveal himself to us and reveal a plan that he has for us, a, a calling or a work or a ministry or something that he wants us to do that will, that will stretch us a little bit beyond what would normally make us comfortable and cause us to rely upon him and rely upon his strength, rely upon his presence and what he provides in order to accomplish the purposes that he has uh, for our life. And so it's going to be a year of growth. Can you say amen to that? And so let's stand for the uh, reading of God's Word, and, and really this is going to be a, a brief uh, message uh, this morning, and when I say brief, I do mean brief. Uh, I usually preach for about 40 minutes. I have no intention of uh, doing that this morning. What I would like to do is just highlight to you some of the things that are familiar to you about the story of Moses, but then have us come to the altar this morning, those of you that feel uh, led to do so and prompted to do so perhaps, but the invitation is going to be made to just present ourselves before God and, and let Him know that we're available to be used in whatever way uh, that He so chooses. And just like Moses had an encounter with the revelation of God in a personal, a very personal way, so our calling and the things that God wants to do in our lives as He stretches us beyond our, our comfortable place and puts us into a place of growth, um, we need a personal revelation of that for ourselves. Amen? And so let's begin uh, reading in Exodus chapter 3, and we'll go through to uh, chapter 4 and some verses in there. And of course, you know the story of God appearing to Moses in the burning bush, and we're going to pick it up at, at verse 11 and, uh, and go into chapter 4. And so follow along with me as I'm, I'm reading uh, from the NIV this morning. Moses said to God, this is after God had given him the call, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on the mountain. And Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and I have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them, and after that, he will let you go. And the Father, we thank you for your word. And I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be a year of growth, and I proclaim that over your people this morning, 
that this will be a year for their growth. That, Lord, you will reveal yourself to them and that you will give them something that you want them to do, a purpose that you have in mind that will actually stretch them beyond what would be comfortable, but as they rely on you, they will find that it is completely possible. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would reveal yourself to us. We don't necessarily ask for a burning bush experience like Moses had, but we do need to have a revelation of your presence in our lives and you speaking to us personally so that we would know, Lord, what it is that you have in store for us. And so we ask, God, that you would do that for us. And we commit our, our lives to serving you and to following the lead of your spirit in us. And we give you thanks for what you will do in 2017 through us for others to the glory of your name. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. You can be seated. It's interesting that uh, God appears to Moses 40 years after he's been in the desert. And the question that Moses asked uh, is one I'm sure uh, that you have asked before. I know I've asked a lot. And that, uh, and that question uh, is who am I? And when God reveals his, his purposes to us uh, and has revealed uh, in some what uh, a plan that he has for us, sometimes we, we do kind of wonder who are we that we should be uh, you know, used by God to do something significant. How many of you have asked a question like that of the Lord? Who am I? You know, what significance am I to you? And, and the, the truth of the matter is that uh, the Lord, and if you, if you want to just jot this down, the first thing that we need to understand, regardless of our past, is the Lord uh, sees significance in us. And the Lord finds you to be quite significant. So look at your neighbor and encourage them and just tell them, the Lord finds you to be quite significant. Because it's the truth. You are significant in the sight of God, and He has something that He wants to do through you. And that's, that's when I was talking to Pastor Blair, I was, I, I was, I'm not sure what it is that the Lord is, is saying about growth, but as, as I prayed on it more, uh, this is what I believe that the Lord is saying, that this year God wants to do something significant through you. Can you believe that? He wants to do something significant through you. And who are you that that should happen? Well, you are significant to God. He loves you. And he cares about you, and he wants to partner with you to do something significant for his name's sake. And he will do exactly what he has done for Moses, perhaps not in the same way. Uh, Moses, of course, had a revelation in a burning bush, and that would have been an amazing experience. And we don't need a burning bush to receive a revelation from God. There are many ways in which he can reveal himself to us, but the I promise you that this year God is going to reveal himself to you in a special way. And he will give you something to do that will be of significance for other people. And that's what it's really all about. And often what we are sometimes uh, guilty of in Pentecostal and Charismatic circles is receiving, you know, the presence of God or wanting the presence of God for how it makes us feel. And, uh, and we enjoy the presence of God, and that's, that's for sure. And, and it's okay to enjoy the presence of God, that's for sure. But we have to recognize as we turn to the story of Moses that when God moves in our lives and reveals himself to us and reveals a purpose to us, it's, it's not for us primarily, it's for others. It's what he wants to do in us that will have an impact and an effect on other people. And so Moses was called to go to Pharaoh where he grew up. He grew up in Pharaoh's home and you know the story. He was called back to Pharaoh, and he was told to go in and tell him that it was time for his people to leave. And God had in mind to raise Moses up to be a national leader and give him influence over uh, many, many people. Now, is that going to be the same call that God has for each and every one of us in this room? Do you think? No, no, we're not all going to be called to you know, national level type leadership or leadership over a multitude of people. But we are called to have a significant impact upon people's lives for the glory of his name. 
There's a, just a couple of testimonies I want to share in regards to this. Uh, Darlene, who isn't here, and, and uh, Darlene, if you're listening online or watching it on YouTube later on, uh, we want to honor you. Darlene, who worked on Christmas Day, uh, went and uh, bought gifts and uh, notes and cards and other things and presented them to the nurses in the hospital as well as the nurses at the Golden Dawn Nursing Home and and just encouraged them and honored them and thanked them for serving other people on, on Christmas, right? Because uh, they missed their families on Christmas Day. And we were in the nursing home this Friday and we, were, we did a New Year's party for them. Boy, that was fun. And uh, Vicki Caudill at the nursing home, when we were uh, getting set up and ready to uh, do the, the year-end party for the nursing home residents, um, she said to me, and thank you, know, thank you and, and your church for doing what you did at Christmas time. Uh, all of the staff are still talking about it. And I looked at her and I said, you're welcome. <laughs> I didn't know that Darlene went to the nursing home as well. I thought she was just doing it in the hospital. I had no idea she was also going into the, the nursing home and giving out these gifts. And so I said, I, I honestly don't know what you're, what you're referencing. I don't... I don't recall us doing anything at Christmas time for you guys, but at any rate, she said, well, I'm going to go and find out what this is all about. And she went back to uh, the office area and, and found and found out and, uh, and came back and said, you know, it was Darlene. I'm, oh, okay, yeah, I knew she was doing something, but I didn't realize. And so Darlene, as the Holy Spirit spoke to her, and this is how it works, as the Holy Spirit spoke to her and gave her an idea to do something, as she acted upon it, it had a tremendous amount of impact upon uh, the nursing home for sure. I, I don't know about the hospital, I'm sure it had impact there. But Vicki had said, they're still talking about it. And wouldn't it be amazing if this year God revealed himself to you and gave you something to do that would have such significance on other people that they would be talking about it for days or months or even years to come. You know, we were at the nursing home on Friday, and uh, that was just so much fun. And they usually just have a quiet tea for the residents kind of at the, at the year end. And uh, I called in the uh, month of November, and I said, you know, we're thinking of maybe wanting to come in and do a Christmas party or something special for the residents. And Vicki had said, well, we, we always have a family party, but we never have anything for New Year's. Would you consider doing something for New Year's? I said, sure, we'll do something for New Year's. Why not? And after uh, we had uh, uh, did the party, like all of the staff that were there were begging us to go back next year. Uh, they were just like, can you come back next year? We hope this is going to be a tradition now because this was so wonderful. And, me. and listen, it was a simple thing, uh, a very simple thing to go in and do, uh, just do something for uh, these people. And it has a tremendous impact upon them. And so what God, I believe, wants to do is take us, uh, you know, and stretch us beyond our comfort zone and reveal to us uh, himself and something significant that he wants to do for other people so that other people will, would have an impact. And the question of who am I? Who am I? Well, uh, I know most of you very, very well. And, uh, you know, you're great people. And, and God loves you. And I love you. And I think that, that God is just going to do something special if we would seek the Lord and open ourselves up to Him and ask Him to do a significant work in our lives. How many of you would like to be used by God in 2017? Genuinely, would like to be used by God in 2017. And so in just a moment, we're just gonna, I'm just going to have you come to the altar and we're just going to pray together that God would reveal Himself to us and would show us what it is that we can do. Just look at your neighbor and just, and just tell them, you have a contribution to make. You have a contribution to make. You really do. You have a contribution to make. And your life has the potential of significantly impacting many more people's lives. It might not be like Moses on a scale of like millions of people or thousands upon thousands of people. But if you have an impact on a few people this year, uh, that that changes them, perhaps turns them to the Lord. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be a year worth living. Amen. Amen. 
And so God wants to do something significant uh, in us. Uh, the question that, that Moses asked, of course, is answered, and you know uh, the story, but it, it should be uh, clear to us that we need the Lord. That we need the Lord. And if God is going to stretch us beyond our comfort zone, it means it's going to have to be something that we wouldn't normally be able to do on our own without the strength and the help of the Lord. Amen? And I believe that's, that's really what He is going to do this year in many of us, is, is that it'll be a year of growth in that way, where He just causes us to be something and do something that we normally wouldn't do, that we normally wouldn't have the personality for, or the strength for, or the gifting for, but His promise to us is that when He reveals Himself to us, and He gives us something to do, that He will be with us. And that His presence will be with us. So who am I? And God said, I'll be with you. Don't worry about it. And uh, we just need to understand how desperately we need the presence of the Lord. And that's kind of the life story of Moses, if you read the whole story, isn't it? His encounter with the presence of God and him never wanting the presence of God to be uh, apart from him. Even if it meant... Uh, missing the promised land. He didn't want to miss the promised land if it wasn't with the presence of the Lord. And we absolutely need His presence. His presence makes the difference in absolutely everything. And going through, uh, you know, a service like we have today and reading your Bibles and praying and and doing all of the, the, the disciplines that good Christians need to do in order to grow, uh, all of those ultimately end up meaning nothing if we don't have an encounter with the living God and experience His, His presence in a personal way. It just becomes a form of religion that denies its power that Paul warned about when he wrote to Timothy. And God wants to reveal Himself to you. And show you this year how much significance you can have for Him. And what you uh, can do for other people. And I, I like uh, the next thing that, uh, that happened. It's not exactly the next thing in the story. But I want you to see this. Um, in verses 15 and 16. In particular in verse 16. Uh, and if God's going to do something significant uh, through you. And I believe he is. Uh, here's, here's the next lesson that we see in this story. That you're not going to be able to do it on your own. You need the Lord, but you're going to need other people. If you look at verse 15, it says, God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord has appeared to you. And then in verse 16, look at what it says. Go assemble the elders of Israel and let them know what God has planned. And if you are going to succeed in what God wants you to do in 2017, you're going to need to gather people around you who you know are going to be able to help you. And just take a look around uh, this morning. I hope that people in this room are going to be ones that, that you feel confident to gather around yourself and say, you know what, I want to do this and I, I, God has spoken to me and I want to... I want to work toward this. And you know, we don't have to be passionate about everybody's uh, calling, but we do have to be willing to serve their calling and willing to help them in what they are wanting to do for the sake of God. And when it comes time for us to gather people around, they might not be passionate about what God is speaking to us about, but they're going to be willing to help because we'll be able to tell them, look, if God has showed himself up uh, to me and he's revealed this to me, he wants... He wants me to go and do this, and I'm going to need help to do it. Would you help me? And how many would be willing helpers if someone came to you and said, God spoke to me and I want to do this? And it's not like we're going to be able to do it all of the time, 24-7, but you know, this week, for example, uh, Cheryl, our, the, the shelves are in, and at some point this week, we're going to need to go to the, the Cape Croker Food Bank and assemble some brand new shelving. Yay. And, and bless the Cape Croker Food Bank. And so Cheryl will let me know. And, and it'll be probably fairly short notice, but if you're not working this week or available this week, we'll send out an email, we'll give you a, a, the day and the time, and we're going to go and, and, and bless the food bank by, by helping them. Uh, we need each other. Just, just say that. We 
need each other. And you cannot accomplish the purpose that God has for you uh, by yourself. God has created a community of, of, of believers from the Old Testament through the New Testament who are supposed to be people that we can call to ourselves and speak to them about what God is, is saying and about what God is doing and ask, ask for their help. And I want you to see what actually takes place here because we have this idea sometimes that Moses gets this call, Moses gets this revelation, Moses goes and he boldly stands before Pharaoh and, and he says, let my people go, right? But Moses wasn't alone when he went in. I want you to see from the text as he gathered the elders together, and let's just read what it says as in verse 16. Assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and he said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. I am a, and I promise to bring you out of your misery in Egypt into the land of uh, all of those places. And I'm going to read them again, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of uh, Israel will listen to you. And then look at what it says in verse 18. Then you and the elders are to go to the king and say to him, the Lord the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Moses didn't go in alone. The people that he gathered to himself in order to help him fulfill his call went with him. That's significant. And there are, there are things that are happening in the, in the life and ministries of our church that are absolutely impossible for one person to do. And we need help in every area. And if God calls you to do something, we need to be people willing to serve the call of others. We need to be willing to serve the call of others. And likewise, we need people to be willing to serve the call of our life. We can't do it on our own. It's just not going to be possible. And then as we, as we do that uh, with God, uh, He'll just do incredible things. He'll be with us all along the way. But we need to know that we have a family who we can call upon, who will meet us in our time of need and will help us with respect to what we feel God is saying to us. So what's going to happen this year? I really feel this year God is going to speak to some of us. And He's just He's going to speak to us in such a way that He's just going to give us something that is going to stretch us beyond, it's going to cause us to grow, to trust in Him, to trust in other people. You know, in order to do something significant for God, you have to trust in Him, right? right. And you have to trust in others, because you can't do it on your own. How I many of you have heard the expression, you want to get something done, right? Do it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> right? How many of you have actually lived by that model from time to time? And if we're going to do something significant for God, we're going to have to learn to trust other people. We're going to have to learn to let other people in on the plan and, you know, participate in the plan and do, do some of the things that um, are required in order for, for it to be in order for it to be a success. And there's, there's, there's lots of other things going on uh, in, in this story of Moses, but I, I don't want to really linger on there anymore. Let's stand in, in the presence of the Lord. I told you it was, it was going to be a brief message. I think what we, what we need to do, and again, this is if you feel... Uh, led to do so. If something resonates uh, with you and your spirit with, with what I've been talking about, I think it would be good for us just to present ourselves to the Lord. Uh, we use the altar as a, as a designation uh, for that. Uh, you certainly can do that from where you are uh, in the pew, but I think there is something significant about coming and presenting yourself to God. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, of course, uh, Paul's words um, in regards to uh, this very thing. He said, in, in, in view of God's mercy, 
uh, let us uh, present our bodies to God as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to Him. For this is our spiritual act of worship. And here's what Paul promised when we do that. Uh, he said not to be conformed to the pattern of the world, um, but be renewed in your mind. And then he said, then you will be able to test and to know and approve what God's will is. And so the, the formula there, if you will, is if we want to know what God has for us, if we want to know what it is that he plans to do through us that will have a significant impact on others, we have to present ourselves to him. And when we do that, he will reveal himself to us and let us know the significant work that he wants us to do. And I'm thankful to God that, you know, we had people uh, come this past Friday. I mean, it was my idea, it was my brainchild to go into the nursing home, and I just, I let the church know, and we had uh, a bunch of kids come, the McNair kids were there, the weather kid, weather, the weather kid, the weather head children were there, Brad and Debbie brought their, their grandchildren there, and uh, they sang, and they, they gave out gifts to the, the residents. I mean, it was just, uh, I, you know, I said to, uh, I believe I said to Patty, you know, like, uh, I just, I'm so thankful that those people came because I could have played Family Feud for an hour, but it just sure wouldn't have been much of a much of a, a party doing that for an hour, dragging that out for an hour. Um, the impact that we had on the nursing home happened because of the very thing that I've been sharing with you this morning. Uh, that that, that as, as I called upon you to help, those of you that were available and, and, and felt the need to serve in that in that capacity came and made made it what it was. And so let's uh, let's go to the Lord in in prayer this morning. And if you feel so led, why don't you uh, why don't you come to uh, the front?